Book 1, Chapter 4 of Progress or Improvement He who is making progress, having learned from philosophers that desire means the desire of good things, and aversion means aversion from bad things, having learned too that happiness and tranquility are not attainable by man otherwise than by not failing to obtain what he desires, and not falling into that which he would avoid, such a man takes himself from desire altogether and defers it, and he employs his aversion only on things which are dependent on his will. For if he attempts to avoid anything independent of his will. He knows that sometimes he will fall in with something which he wishes to avoid and he will be unhappy. Now a virtue promises good fortune and tranquility and happiness. Certainly also the progress towards virtue is progress towards each of these things. For it is always true that to whatever point the perfecting of anything leads us, progress is an approach towards this point. How then do we admit that virtue is such as I have said, and yet seek progress in other things and make a display of it? What is the product of virtue? Tranquility. Who then makes improvement? Is it he who has read many books of Chrysippus? But does virtue consist in having understood Chrysippus? If this is so, progress is clearly nothing else than knowing a great deal of Chrysippus. But now we admit that virtue produces one thing, and we declare that approaching near to it is another thing, namely progress or improvement. Such a person, says one, is already able to read Chrysippus by himself. Indeed, sir, you are making great progress. What kind of progress? But why do you mock the man? Why do you draw him away from the perception of his own misfortunes? Will you not show him the effect of virtue that he may learn where to look for improvement? Seek it there, wretch, where your work lies. And where is your work? In desire and in the virgin. That you will may not be disappointed in your desire and you may not and you may not fall into that which you would avoid in your pursuit and avoiding that you commit no error in the scent and suspension of ascent that you be not deceived. The first things and the most necessary are those which I have named. But if with trembling and lamentation you seek not to fall into that which you avoid, tell me how you are improving. Do you then show me your improvement in these things? If I were talking to an athlete, I would say, show me your shoulders. And then he might say, here are my halterers. You and your halterers look to that. I shall reply, I wish to see the effect of the halterers. So when you say, take the treatise on the act of powers and see how I have studied it. I reply, slave, I am not inquiring about this, but how you exercise pursuit and avoidance, desire and aversion, how you design and purpose and prepare yourself, was it conformably to nature or not? If a conformably, give me evidence of it, and I'll say that you are making progress. But if not conformably, be gone, and not only expound your books, but write such books yourself. And what will you gain by it? Do you not know that the whole book costs only five denarii? Does then the expounder seem to be worth more than five denarii? Never then look for the matter itself in one place and progress towards it in another. Where then is progress? If any of you, withdrawing himself from externals, turns to his own will to exercise it and to improve it by labor, so as to make it conformable to nature, elevated, free, unrestrained, unimpeded, faithful, modest, as if he has learned that he who desires or avoids the things which are not in his power can neither be faithful nor free, but of necessity he must change with them and be tossed about with them as in a tempest, and of necessity must subject himself to others who have the power to procure or prevent what he desires or would avoid. Finally, when he rises in the morning, if he observes and keeps these rules, bathes as a man of fidelity, eats as a modest man, in like manner, if in every matter that occurs he works out his chief principles as a runner does with reference to running and a trainer of the voice with reference to the voice this is the man who has tra not traveled in vain but if he has restrained his efforts to the practice of reading books and labors only at this and has traveled for this i tell him to return home immediately and not to neglect his affairs there for this for which he has traveled is nothing excuse me 
But the other thing is something. To study how a man could rid his life of lamentation and groaning and saying, Woe to me, and wretched that I am, and to rid it also of misfortune and disappointment, and to learn what death is, and exile, and prison, and poison, that he may be able to say when he is in fetters, Dear Credo, if it is the will of the gods that it be so, let it be so. And not to say, Wretched am I, an old man. Have I kept my gray hairs for this? Who is it that speaks thus? Do you think that I shall name some man of no repute and of low condition? Does not Priam say this? Does not Oedipus say this? Nay, all kings say it. For what else is tragedy than the perturbations of men who value externals exhibited in this kind of poetry? But if a man must learn by friction that no external things which are independent of the will concern us, for my part I should like this fiction, by the aid of which I should live happily and undisturbed. But you must consider for yourselves what you wish. What then does Chrysippus teach us? The reply is to know that these things are not false, from which happiness comes and tranquility arises. Take my books, and you will learn how true and conformable to nature are the things which make me free from perturbations. O oh, great good fortune, or the great benefactor who points out the way. To Triptolemus, all men have erected temples and altars, because he gave us food by cultivation, but to him who discovered truth and brought it to light and communicated it to all, not the truth which shows us how to live, but how to live well, who of you for this reason have built an altar, or a temple, or has dedicated a statue, or who worships God for this? Because the gods has given the vine or the wheat, we sacrifice to them. But because they have produced in the human mind that fruit by which they designed to show us the truth which relates to happiness, shall we not thank God for this?